I want to talk about treatment now. <clears throat> and you can talk about cancer endlessly because there's, I don't know, 100 cancers, who knows how many. Uh, but you're working on diabetes, and diabetes has a special interest of, for Canada because of Banting and Best and the whole tradition in Canada. You have a collaboration with Canada on that. That's right. Um, I think that, uh, I guess, Canada is very lucky in that you've inherited one of the students from our lab. Oh, I see. <laughs> um, he's an Israeli? He's an Israeli, Moshe Schiff. And where is he working? He's at McGill University. Um, an excellent scientist who also works on DNA methylation and does a lot, a lot of interesting things far beyond the type of things that we do in our lab. So um, you're, all, you're very lucky. Um, th there's We've actually ha we actually have a collaboration between McGill and the Hebrew University, the Institute for Medical Research in Israel Canada, uh, which is just getting started, um, in which we've taken upon ourselves to study a general phenomenon about DNA methylation, which could have very, very um, important implications for medicine as a whole. Um, and that is the idea that perhaps the environment that we live in can affect the behavior of our cells by changing DNA methylation. For example, how does it change it? So the, uh, the idea is that as a human being goes through life, He's exposed to all sorts of things from the environment. These could be social things, family things, psychological effects, exposed to chemicals, exposed to foods, different kind of air. You mean if you're watching your son make Beaufort, you get excited and go thrilled because right. he's giving you the thrill. It affects your cells? It affects my, our bodies. And the, and the methylation? Well. So the idea is that maybe most of these effects are transient. Right. You know, we get so excited and then we relax. But the idea is that because DNA methylation is a stable, long-term control mechanism, that some of these effects may trigger a change in methylation. And then the effect of that will live on. In well, a sense. Give me an example, because we're not talking about radiation, because radiation alters the gene. You're right. talking about methylation. So what is an example? Okay, so I'm going to give you an example. Okay. It's currently hypothetical. Oh, okay. But uh, this is something that we're going to work on with the group at McGill. So we know that in, in children uh, that are born from uh, mothers who had uh, diabetes during pregnancy have a very, very high percentage of cases in which they themselves develop, many, many years later, they develop diabetes. Okay? So something about this person being present in the womb at the time when his mother had diabetes has somehow had a long-lasting effect on this person such that when he gets older, he develops diabetes. Nobody knows how this works. But one of the ideas is that this initial exposure caused some sort of change, a permanent change in gene regulation, like oh. methylation can do. So we don't know if it's methylation. But well, you must have some hints, otherwise you wouldn't. Think. Well, I wish we did have. No, you some don't. <laughs> you mean it's just an, an, a real exploration? Yeah. It's an exploration, and, but you know it's the tip of the iceberg because uh, there many people think um, that there are a lot of changes in methylation going on, which could have long-lasting effects. People ask questions, for instance. And this is also groups in Canada that work on this. People ask questions, you know, how can you start off with identical twins? And one of them develops schizophrenia and the other doesn't. 
which have the exact same genes. Right. How does this happen? And one of the thoughts is that it could be these epigenetic changes. That one is exposed to this and the other exposed to something else. And it makes an epigenetic change, change in the structure, in methylation, in regulation. So, but has it affected some areas of treatment at all in any areas? No, or not? It hasn't got to that. No, yet. not at all. That's it's still all, a real. This long is long. futuristic medicine. But okay, getting back to the basic science of it and, and getting it to methylation, diabetes is a, an unusual condition because uh, A, it's related to if you have diabetes, evidently helps you live longer in a some, fun, some paradoxical way. Why is the connection? And I really don't know, I must tell yeah. you. <laughs> but uh, I can just tell you that there are many types of um, diseases that ultimately end up having also an advantage to the organism. I mean, basically, evolution works this way. That even though something is a little bit damaging, it could have ultimately have an advantage for the organism. So it's you, you don't. And which one does and doesn't? We don't know. No, <laughs> it it's works not out. Very complex. The the when you're working here and you have all these different units in the Institute of Medical Research here, um, how much collaboration and feedback is there from one group to another? You have what twenty one groups or eighteen groups? I can't remember. So, um, I mean, are you in isolated silos, or do you have lots of interchanges? So, of course, every um, the, the, the structure is made up of individual scientists, mm. and each scientist has his own agenda, his own interests, his own way of doing things, and he builds up a group, which is composed usually of doctoral students, sometimes postdoctoral students. Um, but then he interacts with the system in a, a number of different ways. Right? One of the ways is he initiates individual collaborations with other people. So as you were well aware, today doing good science is not easy. It's, it's hard, mainly because science today is complex, and no individual person can really study something on his own. He needs help. He needs people who work in a little different discipline or have different skills. And so this happens all the time here at the medical school, here at the Institute for Medical Research. There are many, many individual groups that collaborate one with another. They collaborate with other people here in Israel. They collaborate with people all over the world, as we're trying to do now with, uh, with Canada. Right? And so that's a second level of interaction. And then there's a general level of interaction, and that is that at, at here at the Institute for Medical Research, we have lots of seminars, lots of lectures. We have a forum for students to get together to discuss their work. We have forums for presenting work to the students. And uh, all this together generates really a, an organism, uh, a type of biological research organism, which is essential for doing good research. And I think here at the medical school, we have a really healthy organism <laughs> no, that works well. It, because that's precisely it. You need, it needs to be really creative and where everybody's invigorated by that's one right. another. And that's been my impression in the interviews, actually. Uh, I'm going to end with one thing. You have six ch ki kids. W one is a filmmaker, um, made Beaufort. What are the other five? But you have five, six sons. I have uh, six children. Four of them are sons. So, oh, so I, because th I read there were six sons. Because I have four sons and two daughters. Oh, so, also. Yeah, wow. but you have twelve grandchildren. I only have nine. <laughs> so you're ahead of me. The race isn't over yet. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> I have young guys. <laughs> the competitive factor of the genes. It's not me, it's the but genes. I must tell you that my daughter's going to give birth in about a week. Oh, so. I see. Uh, so time. don't count. <laughs> I'm, I'm beating me. Yeah. And yeah, I don't know. There are many families where people um, 
where the children go into the, the same field that their parents go into. And that's partially true in our family also, but how many, they don't, how but many are researchers? None of them are researchers. Oh, I see. <laughs> well, but with that, we have to end, because I at least have two professors. Oh, wow. So, so not bad. <laughs> so all of my kids take after my wife. <laughs> you can say that's good or bad. It's wonderful. Anyway, thank you very much, Chaim. I really appreciate it.